Hello, this is Chandler Holloway, and I'm here with the CTX700, one of my favorite Casio keyboards. I'm going to fire it up and play some chords, but listen closely and you might just notice a spicy surprise twist. Yes, you heard that right. I had piano and strings layered together, but I was somehow able to change the volume balance of those two tones. If you're familiar with the CTX700, then you know that this is normally impossible. And as a result, a lack of layer volume control is often cited as one of the biggest downsides of an otherwise well-rounded entry-level keyboard with amazing sound quality for the price. So if that's the case, then how do they make that happen? Well, I can tell you right now that I'm not running any custom firmware, I didn't open it up to fiddle with the circuit board, and as you can see, I'm not connected to any external software over USB. The real secret sauce here is, drumroll please, RVK files. Yes, that's right, just registration bank files, the same standard format that your keyboard exports when you want to archive user registrations on your computer. You can even load them in using Casio's official data manager software, which is exactly what I did to set up that piano and strings demo earlier. Now, full disclosure, these aren't just regular RBK files. These files were specially modified to apply custom volume levels using my free software utility RBK Mixer. You see, according to the manual, these are all the settings that you can store in a registration. There is plenty to work with here, but it's not a complete list. In reality, registration files contain additional parameters, like the volume level of the layered and split tones, that aren't accessible through the onboard controls. However, if you have an RBK file on your computer, you can modify these hidden parameters through software editing, and then apply those changes when you recall the registration on your keyboard. That's where RBK Mixer comes in. Editing these proprietary registration files is normally a pretty involved process, but RBK Mixer makes it much easier by organizing all the relevant settings in a straightforward Mixer interface. Quick side note, if you haven't used registrations much in the past, I totally understand if you're feeling a bit lost right now. If you'd prefer a more detailed explanation of this whole process, I've linked a separate startup guide video in the description down below. In any case, the first thing we'll need is a registration bank file from an instrument that's compatible with RBK Mixer. These RBK files contain four registrations each, so I've prepared a few examples to illustrate some common applications of advanced registration editing. First up, we've got an improved version of that same piano and strings combo. Although it may seem redundant, I've also thrown in an extra grand piano on the lower split. Enabling the duplicate piano split helps me avoid triggering the strings layer when I'm playing down low, which prevents the deep, boomy strings from muddying up the left hand part. As for the volume level, I've left the pianos on upper 1 and lower at the max 127, but dialed back the strings on upper 2 to make sure piano is the more prominent timbre. That's a pretty straightforward example, but what about something a bit more subtle? Well, I'll give you a cool sound design trick for free, but only because you're a friend of the show, okay? Seriously, don't tell anybody. <clears throat> Try layering a sine wave sound with your electric piano tones. I think it makes for a fuller sound with a sustain that's a bit more pronounced.
However, with the default volume of the sine wave on my CDP S350, it tends to overpower the E piano, particularly at the low and high ends of the keyboard where it's especially harsh. Thanks to RBK Mixer, I was able to dial back the sine lead sound and let the E piano do the heavy lifting. One of my favorite tones on this instrument is X Synth Lead 4, and I especially love to use it with the filter arpeggiator to simulate a tempo synced LFO. However, in practice, I have a hard time layering it with anything else, because its default volume is super loud. Using RBK Mixer, I was able to decrease the volume of the synth lead so that it meshes well with this classic New Age pad. That wraps up my introductory demos, but like I said before, definitely check out the startup guide and those previous utility bank demos for more information. You can find a link to those videos in the description down below, as well as a link to the hub thread for RBK Mixer over on Casio Music Forums. That thread is a great place to ask for help, give feedback, or share custom registrations with other Casio users. Please consider subscribing to my channel for future tutorials or updates on RBK Mixer, as well as my other Casio software project, Restyle. This has been Chandler Holloway, project lead for RBK Mixer. Thanks for watching.